Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex with Portland Event Films. We own a production company in Portland, Oregon. And today I'm going to talk to you about these new Godox lights. We have the 150, the FV200, and then we also have the VL300. And I'm going to talk to you about why I decided to go with these different lights and which ones you should buy depending on your particular application. Now, I'm not really going to focus too much on the in individual specs and, and how bright it is, but where is each one of these fit in my lighting kit and where is it practical? Because I brought all three of these for vastly uh, different reasons, but they all fit into our lighting kit. And so I'm gonna focus on corporate shooting, uh, real estate, and mostly weddings, because that's the majority of our business. Um, so I'm gonna break it into you. First, we're gonna start with the 150. I'm gonna show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And then later on the video, I'm gonna show you how we set it up and how we move it so it's functional. Um, so the main difference is, is when you're doing a real estate or a wedding, you need to be able to put your stuff in there, get your shots, get what you need, and be able to move it out very quickly. Um, so that's why we went with the different lights. So first we're gonna start with the 150, and then I'll go through the other lights and give you guys reasons why I bought each of them. All right, so what we have here is the VL150. It's very comparable to the Aperture 120D. It's probably where they got the style from. Um, so what we have here is we have our COB light. We have a power brick. And then we also have uh, the controller. And then here we have a uh, V-mount battery. Now, whether you're using the V-mount battery or the power brick, you're still gonna need the controller part. So no matter what you do, you're still gonna have these two together. So I'm gonna put this together real quick. All right, so this particular light we bought here for is to do mainly for speeches at a wedding. That way we can put it up high. And I bought this mainly for the head table where it's pretty powerful. I can still put the cone on it and light up the whole head table where I can use some of my other lights to get down to the person speaking. Uh, I prefer a Fresnel lens and something with barn doors that I can really focus for the speeches. But when I'm doing uh, the dance party and then uh, lighting up like the whole head table where the light needs to be spread out a little bit more, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this light. But you can see this is really light. It's really small and really portable. If you wanna plug it in at the house, You're gonna plug this in down here, and then uh, there's another cable that comes with it that you plug this uh, into the wall. So pretty much you have the light, this controller, and then this hanging. It does come with this little like diaper thing where you can slide this in here. But now you got you know this cord hanging and then this hanging from here. So it's a lot of different pieces to put together to get everything uh, to work right. So that's one thing that you wanna consider uh, when buying a light like this. So let me actually show you from here. This, this is the Practolite 602. And this is what I use for speeches. It's a very, very good light. I think it's around, around 900 bucks right now. So you can almost get three of these for the price of this but it is a Fresnel lens. You can focus it on the back to a beam, but it is by color. But for this light to work, this is all you need, is this cord right here and this battery, and you can run this light, and that's all I need. So you can see the, the brick size here versus throwing this really high uh, on a tripod. I did a full video, uh, put a card up in the top, um, I would say this is a little bit brighter than this light, but this is very specific. I usually only use this one for speeches. So right here, give you a little bit of a size comparison side by side. About the same size, uh, about the same weight. But like I said, this everything is con controlled in here. Um, and so you don't need this extra connector. Um, the fan, fan noise is about the same. I never worry about it because usually it's put up 
pretty high and there's ambient noise so i don't ever worry about that like i said i bought this specifically for my speeches because it has that bi-color feature um, i do like the remote that comes with this one this one is only app based and i hate app based um, lights and the reason is because i have one light that's on one app then if i have a different light that's on a different app and then i have my audio recorder that's hooked up to uh, an app and if i can have controllers i much rather prefer that all right so this is the fv 200 i was debating between this light and then the sl 200 um right now i'm being lit by the old 200 um this is their new newer upgraded version it's not the quietest version they have one other one that's like this um that's a little bit quieter the other two lights that i had are battery powered this one is not a battery powered light i really wish that they had this in a 300 but they do not make this in a 300 i think because the fan noise would be um so loud in this because in the back here all the controls are here there's no control box with this one so i just plug in the cord and then everything's controlled here now that could be good or it can be bad depending on what you're doing and what your application is i bought this for corporate shoots and doing some real estate stuff i got this one so that way i can just plug it in and set it and then forget it don't have to worry about a uh, battery running out or something running out in me this is usually what i use set up uh in my studio but it's really nice on corporate shoots where we're doing a longer shoot and i don't want to worry about a battery and i don't want to worry about a big controller a lot of times i will uh put this with my uh aperture light dome and then point it straight up in the air to kind of illuminate the whole room that's my main focus now the reason why i went with this one is because this also has a built-in flash function so I can use this. I would say the power on this is probably less than an AD200, but a little bit brighter than a speed light. So this makes a really good second or third light in my lighting kit when I'm doing corporate shoots. So the good thing about this is, is I'll have this set up for a corporate shoot. Once that's done and we want to take some photos afterwards, then this can double as a flash. So you have the light that's like a modeling light that's nice and bright and then it will flash and then shut off real quick and pretty much what it's doing is double charging the light that's coming out of it it's not super bright but it's really cool so if you do uh corporate videography and then you do uh photo shoots afterwards or part of your guys's package i would really uh recommend this light wedding light nope no thank you um when I do a wedding, everything is got to be battery powered and even real estate too, because I don't know where all the power is. And so if I can put something on, pick it up, put it on a battery, move it around. My only gripe about this is I really wish they would have had this in a 300 because I already have a 200. It's not as bright as I would like, but I still would really, really like it. Now compared to the 150, um, it's a little bit more cumbersome. The 150 is battery powered this is not so it really it's not that one is better than the other it's just depending on what your application is and what you plan on using it for so now we got the vl 300 this light is super bright uh the fan noise is super quiet i absolutely love this point for the price point it is awesome wedding light eh, it depends corporate is a good corporate light yes it is now i originally started with the 200 and when i bought the 200 it came with a brick this big where it's the uh double battery now the 150 is a single battery and that's why i like it on the wedding i much rather have this for the wedding but this is a little bit bigger throwing it up high on a wedding not so much and usually when I'm carrying the lights, I usually like to pick them up by the tripod so I have the light and the battery pack. Um, I do like the design. Being able to hang this is very nice. But you see, you got to have two V-mount batteries to run this. And that's the same thing with the 200. So this thing is probably 15 pounds. It's pretty, it's pretty heavy carrying uh, these around. <clears throat> now, if you're going to plug it in, you also have this huge... Uh, batter this huge power unit that goes into here we'll just put this up really quick your light that you're putting on your c-stand now you have this that's going to control the light 
and then you have the power brick and this is a lot to set up um, depending on what you're doing so i bought this one for the battery function here let me see And this is mainly what I'm going to be carrying this for. Now, as far as the the power, I do love the power of the 300. Um, the VL 200, I really wish that they would have made a 300 in that, uh, but they don't. So this is my option for the 300. I'm waiting to see if they're going to come out with a 300 that I can just plug in the wall. But for right now, this is what I'm using. Now, on my corporate shoots, I definitely love having the power. So that way, when I have a a big soft box I have enough power to go through or if I'm you know shooting through some diffusion I have that extra power so I really like the power of this um, it is nice having a battery so that way if I have to go outside or I have to be in a location where I don't have power I have that battery option um, with these batteries fully charged and this was at a hundred percent we did a real estate shoot um, it lasted for about round around about two hours I would say um, give or take, but we were turning it on and off. Um, so I really do like the solution, but it's really going to depend on what you're actually using it for. So this is really good setup for weddings. Um, I have this on probably a little bit more of a heavy duty stand uh, that I'm used to, but it's really nice. I can set it, raise it all the way up. And then this is nice coverage for like a full head table at a wedding or I can use it a little bit later on uh, for the dance party. And when I'm doing my uh, weddings and ceremonies and stuff like that, I wanna be able to have a light that I can carry as soon as the speech is, as soon as the special dances are done or whatever I'm using this light for. Um, I can quickly move it out of the way. It's a light setup, it's a battery option. It doesn't have the greatest output in the world, but it's a really good option for something light um, that I need to move out of the way. My only gripe is I don't have a bicolor light and it's not as, as powerful as I would like. Um, they do have the 200 now that is a little bit more powerful. So now this is off of the uh, 300 that I have. I don't have the 200, but when I did order the 200, it had the exact same setup. So you would need two V-mount batteries. And when you put two V-mount batteries on this, this right here becomes super heavy and I don't want to use it um, for weddings or real estate where I'm moving in and out and I want a light portable setup. Great for my commercial shoots and my bigger uh, budget projects that I need a little bit more power. Definitely recommend it for that. But my whole thing here is being sleek and be able to pick it up and move it out of the way and use it for what it's meant for. And it's just a quick tear down and I can move it out of the way. Uh, so next I'm going to show you a VL 200 and what I use that light for. All right. So this is a great little light. So now we're going to do a different setup. I'm going to show you two different modifiers that I use one for real estate and lighting up a room. And the other one is for in my in-home studio. All right. So one of my first modifiers, this is the easy glow, uh, 28. I really like this modifier. Um, it's not one that you have to put together. It's just like the umbrella. You pop it out. Folds up really, really nicely. There's no extravagant setup. Um, I usually use this for my in-home studio. I'm using this modifier and then the VL150 usually for uh, my main key light. So if you're looking for a small modifier, I highly recommend this one. So for me, this is a really good setup. Um, it's just enough light for in my studio. I don't need a ton of light, just a nice little key light uh, to light me up. So it's one of my favorite lights. The good thing about this is they've really upgraded their tightening system. So that way it the other ones would you'd have to tighten it and then it would dip down. Once you tighten this, it stays. You can put it at some pretty extreme angles and it's not super hard and it'll stay. So Depending on what you're doing, you can do a bunch of uh, different angles on it and it works just really well. It's a light setup because all the weight is down here uh, in the setup. On a C-stand, I don't really have to worry about putting a uh, sandbag on it, but with the bigger lights and depending on how far the angle is, then I'll start putting some sandbags on it. 
but this is a really small, good setup for if you're looking for something really light. Uh, so next I'm gonna go into the FV200 and talk about how I use that light. All right, so this is the FV200. Um, this is very interesting light. I don't think that it would end up in my arsenal of lighting, but it seemed to found a home and a place and a good use for it. I really wish they had an FV300, but they don't, but I think I know why. Their biggest complaint in the past was their fan system uh, being really loud. I'm using right now their old 200 and I can hear the fan from here. Um, but I really like this light and I'm a, if you're looking for these aspects, this is who I think this light is for. So one, it does have a, a umbrella holder down here. So if you want to put a modifier on there really quick, that's one way to do it. It is, let's see if we can turn this on. So that's the light at uh, 100%. It's a pretty bright light. It's great for the corporate shoots that I do. Um, I'm gonna switch over. It's on LED light, so that's the light at 100%. And if you push LED here on the back, now we're on test mode, this is at 100% and I will fire a test. So it's double charging the output and then you see it flash off and then flash on really quick. So if you're using this for a commercial shoot where you need to do some videography stuff and you need a light for that, and then you need to switch over and you're gonna double up and be a photographer and get some model shots or whatever photography that you need to, if you need a light to do both, this is really good light for that. Like I said, it's in between like the 8200 and a speed light. So if you need something as a backlight. So usually what I do is I'll put this as a strip box and it'll be my third light in the back. Or sometimes when I'm doing product photography, I'll put a strip box on this. Like I do a lot of wine photography. And so I'll put a strip box on this and it works good where it's not my main light, but I still need a little bit for a little bit extra light. And that's where I think this light really comes into play. The other reason why I love this light is now this can either be a con or it can be what you really want and for me it's what I really wanted is I wanted a light that had no controller this is the whole light is all within this cage I don't have to worry about anything dangling I don't have to worry about uh, batteries and pieces it's this light and a power cord so if you're on a corporate shoot where you're gonna be powering all day long and power cords are, are not an issue for you then I would definitely go with this light um, if you're looking for a little bit more power or a smaller form factor, then I would go with a different light. Um, I wouldn't boom this light out. I mean, you can, but you have to, you know, a lot of heavy sandbags and stuff like that. This light is not meant to be boom. It's probably about twice as heavy as the other lights because everything is self-contained in here. But let me show you now uh, some of my favorite modifiers to use this light and how I'd use this in a corporate shoot. So this is one of my favorite modifiers. This is the Aperture Lantern, and I'll show you how I use this. So give you an idea, it's a, it's a very soft light, and I really love uh, this combination. Um, but when I'm doing like my real estate videos, this is my main uh, go-to uh, light source because I can illuminate the whole room. And if you know in real estate, um, to try, I know a lot of people just run and gun and, and don't light it, but I like to get in there and light my areas in my sets, especially when I have somebody talking, just bouncing it off that wall, uh, especially when I have white walls, I can bounce it off that wall and it's just enough light to light them up that I'm not trying to expose for out the windows and uh, also on the inside. Here's an example. Uh, we had a winery that we did a uh, site walkthrough video for them because everybody's doing COVID stuff and they needed a video that they could send out to their clients. And by having this light just shoot up and reflect, it's just enough for the skin tones and it just made a huge difference. And that's what I use this light for mostly. I uh, also use it for my product videos when I'm lighting up my backdrops. All right, so last but not least, now we have the VL300, which is the big daddy. It is my favorite light. Of course, it's, it's just like the Aperture 300D. Um, but like I said, you know, you got this heavy ballast. Uh, you got these two battery packs. This is a little bit heavier than the 150, but because it's broken up here, I'm comfortable booming it up and straight down if I have a, a sandbag. But for weddings, like I can't lift this up one-handed. And so that's why I went with the 150 where I don't need as much light. But this is great for uh, corporate events, definitely uh, in studio. 
where you're not moving it as much because it is a, a lot heavier to you know pick up and move around but I definitely recommend all three of these lights they're all really good but I really want to focus on this video is what application are you going to use it for and is it worth the extra money if you're just doing weddings go with the 150. If you're doing corporate stuff and you don't need the power of the 300, uh, go with the 200, especially if you do photography, you got a, another option for flash. But if you need a, a big light that has a lot of power, I would definitely uh, recommend this light. I'm hoping that they come out with uh, FV300, hopefully. I would even sacrifice a little bit of fan noise because I usually put those lights uh, a little bit farther away when I need a lot of light and I'm using a bigger modifier but you really can't go wrong with any three of these lights but it really just depends on your application and what you're using it for so it's a very nice soft light like a key light um, i like doing product uh, shots with this or overhead and it's great for talking head and uh interview clips so like i said once again i recommend any of these lights it really just depends on the application so All right, so we have the VL300. Then we have the 150. We got two of the newer batteries. Over here, we got the 150 control box. We got the 300 control box. And then we have two of the power supplies. And I always bring those as a backup. And then we have a power cord here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions or any application uses for these lights, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you guys.